So this one is really fun. This is pushing my luck. In this lesson, I'm just going to show you kind of all these riffs that he does. And we're just going to go through them slow and then fast. And then I'll show you how you can put them in the order that he does. But thanks for joining me and let's jump right in. So the first thing I want to say is that his tuning, he's tuned to open G. Now, a lot of times when he plays it live, he's tuned down a little bit lower. That's what I have this in tuned to uh, open F sharp, which is just the same as open G, except it's down a half step. Sounds like this. All right. And then just for the lesson, we're gonna do it in open G because I know a lot of you guys are already tuned to open G and it's just gonna make it a lot easier for the lesson. So, so here's riff one. Um, I'm gonna play it first fast and then we'll uh, slow it down with the metronome. Two, three, four. Okay, so this riff is probably kind of this is a good riff to start with because it's a little bit easier than some of the other ones. The main thing you gotta you know is that the right thumb is just playing this G string, well it's the A string, the fifth string, now it's tuned to G, uh, the entire time, just monotonic bass like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, and then the riff goes like this. Let's do that with the metronome. The recordings that he has are around 185 beats per minute, uh, which is pretty fast. We're gonna slow that all the way down. Okay, now we're at 90. So thumbs clicking like this. So one, two, three, four. ways that he varies this is sometimes instead of playing the phrase uh, at the end like that sometimes it'll just hit kind of like a power chord and it'll sound like this uh. okay so use that as a variation when you're playing it uh, you know up to speed it's not like this okay let's move on to riff two Riff 2 is kind of a variation on Riff 1, uh, where we do like a little trill part. Okay, um, I'm gonna play it fast and slow, I'll show you the variations that he does. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's go through the slow speed and then we'll talk about the variations. So here's at 90 beats per minute. One, two, three, four, one. Okay. That's at that slow speed. A couple variations that he does it. When he plays in the studio version, he holds this note a little bit longer, phrased like this, kind of. Okay. 
Notice also sometimes he'll kind of give that a small or a kind of medium sized bend, kind of like that. Okay, so just pull it downwards that way uh, so it stays away from your other, that string, okay? And then the same way at the ending, sometimes he's gonna do this full chord instead of, uh, okay? So use that as a variation when you guys are playing it too. Let's go to riff number three. Now riff number three comes in two different phrases, uh, and they're basically the same, and I'm gonna play through this four measure phrase twice, full speed, and then we'll slow it down. One, two, three, four. So notice that it's it's phrased almost exactly the same way. The first time it goes, okay. The second time, like that. Also notice that on that third fret here, on the third string, that's that bend note. So sometimes he's gonna give that more of a bend, like that. Okay. So let's do this slow. Two, three, four. Now again here, you can, on the kind of answer part, you know, where he's going, you can phrase it either way. Or, okay. Now note some of the pull-offs in there when we have a, so that pull-off there. Um, okay, and then also you don't have to give it that bend. You can kind of give it some vibrato or just hold it. Uh, play it the way that you feel is most comfortable and uh, work up from there. One more variation that he plays uh, too in the live versions, but not so much in the studio version, uh, but it's still worthwhile to learn. Uh, we'll just call this riff four. So this sounds like this, full speed. Two, three, four. Okay, so slowly let's break that riff down. Here's a 90, two. Four. Again, remember you can hit that as kind of power chords instead of the, okay, and mix that up. Finally, we're gonna go into this kind of B section, and this is where he's singing the song. This is where he's kind of like, the only parts where he's singing, and he sings over this kind of chord where he's playing like this. Okay. Sometimes we'll play the chord like this too. So it, almost, so it looks like a C chord, except without this third finger, and then sometimes he'll place that there. Um, and this is kind of like a C7 chord when we're in open G. So the way that he phrases it is kind of unique. He, he'll play it first into this kind of what we're calling the B section, which is really, I guess, the chorus because he's singing on it. Um, but he'll play kind of riff three into the chorus. Let me play the whole thing and then uh, we'll break it apart. Two, three, four. <laughs> unusual phrasing. When he starts singing, he's playing over this phrase, okay. and really kind of just treat it almost like as a strum, going thumb, thumb, index, thumb, index, thumb, index, almost like we're strumming, kind of like this. But the one unusual thing that he's doing with it is he plays it for five measures. So once he starts there, um, and he's singing the part, pushing my luck here, he'll go one, two, three, four, two, Four, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, then back. Uh, 
let's do that whole B section phrase slowly. Um, once you play the B section, it just goes back into kind of some of the main riffs. Here it is at 90. Three, four. Those are the riffs. He plays these riffs and he varies them each time he plays it. So there's a bunch of different live versions that you guys can check out online to see where he's playing these riffs a little bit differently each time. Now, so I mapped out about the first minute or so of the studio version and a live version that he did it. Um, and let's look at the variations. In the studio and the live version, he starts with riff three. Okay. And then that's where he kind of changes it up. So then uh, the live version, he'll stay on riff three for a little bit. Then he goes to riff two. So just look at the different variations that we have. Um, and remember, this is just kind of the first minute of the song. He more or less is just going to repeat this order throughout. Now, not exactly, right? He's not memorizing an order. He's, he's memorizing riffs, and then he plays the riffs when they come to his mind and they, it feels right, right? Um, he's just kind of, he's playing by feel and that's like a big thing with these blues things. It's, it's not so much just memorization, it's more just, you know, getting the emotional context of the riff and then varying it slightly and then varying the phrasing slightly too. So instead of just playing the song, you know, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, like some pop song would do, he has a bunch of different phrases and then he, you know, reorders them each time he plays it. And I think that makes it kind of fun for the listener and definitely makes it more fun for you playing it. Instead of just memorizing something all the way through, you can kind of get the overall emotional feel of it and then just play it like that, okay? So that's it, I hope this helps, guys. I wanted this one to be a short one just to go over these riffs. Just rewind this and go over those riffs slowly and fast. Of course, if you join uh, FGA members, you can download the tabs and print them out. Uh, it makes it a lot easier for me if I'm looking at a printout. <laughs> um, but then you try to memorize the riffs and then just put them in your own order and have fun with it, okay? I had a lot of fun showing you this, guys, and thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one.